Welcome, and thank you for tuning in to the Sunday services at Center for Spiritual Living, Denver. We are a loving and prospering community in the heart of Denver and online. We now conduct hybrid services at the historic Grant Avenue Community Center and Sacred Place, located at 216 South Grant Street, Denver, Colorado. All are welcomed here. A place, space, and face of love. We are a spiritual community practicing universal principles that enrich our lives. We are grateful that you have blessed us with your presence. While online, we'd love to know you're watching with us. Feel free to leave a comment and let everyone appreciate you. With everything going on, life can feel overwhelming. CSL Denver wants you to know we are here for you. Please know that our practitioners are available for personal prayer work. Our licensed spiritual practitioners' names and phone numbers are available on our website at csldenver.org. Or, if you have a prayer request, feel free to email it to info at csldenver.org. For your convenience, you'll find clickable links in the description of this broadcast. Rev Zia, along with all our guest speakers, practitioners, service coordinators, and musical inspirations, want you to know how truly grateful we are that you are with us today. Thank you for your continued support and participation in our services, workshops, and events, as well as providing financial contributions to our center. If you're interested in upcoming events and information, we send out weekly newsletters. Sign up by visiting www.csldenver.org. We deliver services in a hybrid format where we meet in person at 216 South Grant Street. We will also continue to live stream all services on Facebook and YouTube every Sunday. Find us on our respective channels as well as on New Thought Media Network. Again, Thank you for your precious attention. Now prepare for engaging enlightenment. There is a garden Where dreams come true A beautiful garden Where God's grace blooms There is a garden Where everything grows a beautiful garden Where love is sown And in this place Of light and love You can have anything That you're dreaming of there is a garden Where dreams come true A beautiful garden That garden is you
light and love You can have, you can have, can have anything That you're dreaming of There is a garden Where dreams come true A beautiful garden That garden is you Such a beautiful garden That garden is you I'm Rumi, practitioner here at CSL Denver. I invite you to, to the invocation to begin the service. So I invite you to go to that spiritual place within and join me in consciousness as we come together and recognize the one power, one presence called God, spirit, infinite mind, source, beloved. We recognize this presence everywhere in everyone. And we know that we are one with this spirit ourselves. Indeed, we express all that spirit is in our hearts and in our minds. And knowing our oneness with spirit, today I bless everything and everyone around me. I am blessed and I bless my fellow practitioners and all those who are present here both in person and virtually. I bless the words of Reverend Elzia, Susan Clark, a musician, and everyone who has shown up here to set up this service and particularly I welcome and bless the visitors today. Thank you for being part of our service. <clears throat> and so with our openness to this power, presence and peace available here, we expand our ideas of love and of life itself as we cultivate our consciousness to one of acceptance of our own divinity. So with gratitude for all that we are, all that we have, and all that we may become, we let it be so. We turn it over and together we say, and so it is, amen. Our theme today is now is the time to release. And our reading, the main part of our reading is from Living the Science of Mind by Ernest Holmes, of course. But Ernest Holmes starts off by saying, we all have the ability to transcend previous experiences and rise triumphant above them. But we shall never triumph over them while we persist in going through the old mental reactions. From science of my, living the science of mind, Ernest Holmes says, life is an adventure in which we never know what is going to happen just beyond the turn of the road. But too often, our todays are filled with regrets over the past. We are all human, and we have all made mistakes. The starting point for creating a better future for ourselves 
is to deliberately free our minds from the mistakes of yesterday and feel that they need no longer be held against us. They need no longer be a liability. Too often, our minds are so burdened because of the mistakes we have made that we do not take time to forgive ourselves and others and start over again. We cannot go back over the past and relive it. We cannot make adjustments in the past. We have to make them in the present. So today is the time in which we should cut loose from the threads of previous experiences, wherever they were negative, and deliberately make up our minds that we shall no longer create a future out of the old past. As often quoted, principle is not bound by precedent. There is no law in the universe that seeks to perpetuate old limitations. But there is a law which responds to our greater vision at the exact level of that vision. And so it is. And now over to Susan Clark, putting today's topic into song. Hello, Center for Spiritual Living Denver, and a special welcome to any of you who might be watching us now or later online. My name is Susan Clark, and I'm here to provide some special music for your service. And this song is hot off the presses. I just learned it, and I love it. It was written by Sue K. Riley, and it's called Up Until Now. And that title resonated with me because it reminded me of a conversation I had in the past with a friend of mine in which I was lamenting about everything that wasn't going right and all the things I felt I couldn't do well enough. And um, so they let me kind of ramble on. And then when I was finished, they looked at me and they said, well, that's been your story up until now. And I thought, oh, yeah, I can work with spirit and change anything in my life that no longer serves me. So um, powerful message up until now by Sue K. Riley. <laughs> Jesus. 
Thank you. Good morning, good morning, good morning. And welcome to CSL Denver, a place, a face, and a loving community utilizing ancient wisdom and applying principles to empower our lives. I'm so glad that you're here today. And as, as Susan said in the song, up until now, the internet was working fine. <laughs> And then it did its own thing. And, and so we understand that that's life. And it fits so perfectly in with today's topic of release. Now is the time. Release. Now, as we continue with this yearly theme first, I want to set the stage. The yearly theme for Centers of Spiritual Living is a grand rising a grand rising, how do we begin to, to rise up to the call? How do we begin to rise beyond our, our whatevers that has kept us mired in small thinking and, and, and just problems that no longer are even there? But because of our mental attitudes, we hold on to them. And so, as we begin to look at month, the theme is this is how we do it. Now, some of you might remember that song, you know, this is how, but I'm not gonna sing it because I'm not that good at it. But 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 this is how we do it. This is how we begin to have a grand rising. That's the theme for this month. And today, especially. The title is release. Is release. Now today, I, I believe I have a message that that is perfectly suited to remove the chains, to remove the blocks, to remove all those impediments that are keeping us mired down, not living our best life, and just wondering what is next what is next now throughout scripture no matter what scripture you read there's always somewhere in there this idea of letting go letting go your burdens letting go your fears letting go your doubts because if you say you trust this power this infinite intelligence this thing that 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 created world not just this world but worlds then what are we holding on to? Why are we still stymied in things that have long past decayed? But we, you know, no one buries anything and then go back and dig it up. Well, unless you're doing forensic, maybe, maybe, maybe if we need to do some DNA, somebody might do it. But, but in in general, that doesn't happen. Right. Once we're done with it, we let it go. We let it go. So the real idea is. What will it take for you to let it go? Now, the Buddha said this. If we get that first slide, the Buddha said the root of all suffering is attachment. The root of all suffering is attachment. Now, just think about it. Think about your brand new car that you just bought. You had it waxed and detailed. I know I used to, when I first got my car, I'd go to the mall. I'd park it way away from everybody. So to make sure nobody door hit it, nobody bumped into it because I was attached. Somehow, I thought that car represented me and I was attached. And so I did all these things based on attachment and then I had an accident, <laughs> my fault. Thank God no one was hurt. But then my attachment was ill-placed and I suffered because not only did I not have the car anymore, 
I had the insurance uh, increase and worrying about the other person. Attachment is the root of all suffering. It says in the Bible that look at the birds of the field. They don't toil. They don't spin. They're not attached to where I'm going to get my next worm or where the next nest is going to be built. They have a faith. They have a trust in the divine intelligence that creates all things that if I do my part, the rest will take care of itself. That's what God promises us, that I am here when you know it or not, when you need me or not. I'm here. The question becomes, where are you? Are you there? Are you present? Or are you attached to something else? So once we can get beyond this attachment, the next thing we have to look at is we understand, or at least we say we understand, that God has created each and every one of us uniquely with a certain set of talents and, and, and gifts. And so the question becomes, how long, and, and this may not apply to everybody, I know it applies to me a lot, how long are you going to hold on to those gifts and not let them go? How long? And, you know, they, how long? Not long. That's what they used to say. How long? Not long. Well, we're going to see if it's not long, right? Because we have some issues facing us today in every aspect of life, whether it's the planet, whether it's the community, whether it's individual, whether it's the globe, we have issues that demand we come up with these gifts. Because if we don't, you know, the proverbial saying, if you keep doing what you're doing, you're going to keep getting what you're getting. We can complain about it. We can talk about it. But if we don't put forth any action, we're going to get the same thing. And that's why this idea of releasing old ways of thinking, old ways of being, old ways of looking at problems has to be changed, has to be changed. Because the world is waiting for our greatness. And so when we look at 1 Corinthians, this, this, this verse from 1 Corinthians says, do you not know that you are God's temple and that God's spirits dwell in you? Do you not know that? Because with that power, with that presence, all things are possible. All things are possible. But we have to know it. We have to believe it. We have to trust in it. And I don't need anybody to co-sign. I, all, I need to know it for myself so that when I begin to do my thing and they say, look at him over there in that corner. Oh, he done lost his mind. I, I, I'm, I'm going with the spirit of me, not the spirit of you. Because God has given us each individual talents, individual skills that are needed. It's like a symphony. We, we often hear the term the symphony of life. If you ever been to a symphony and there was no drums or no uh, harp or piccolo or whatever the instrument is, it takes all of the instruments to make a symphony. And although we can play the song if we don't have the piccolo, if you keenly attune, you understand, boy, that was the piccolo part right there. Piccolo, wasn't, what, what happened to the piccolo? Who was attached to something else that didn't come? Who was not willing to show up and bring their dance to the music? That's a question that we must ask. That's a question that we must ask. And so the people of faith, I don't care what your faith is, but the people of faith who believe in a power that is greater than you, it's time to come together. And we have to release anything that is holding us. And now we got a great example of that this morning when we had to release that hour when the time changed. I didn't like it, I'm just telling you right now. I woke up every hour on the hour trying to see if I was on time. What a horrible thing. But we look at now, we had the releasing of time. 
Today, we'll begin the Ramadan fast for the Islamic community. In a couple of weeks, Easter will be here. And each one of those events speaks to this idea of releasing, of starting anew, of renewal, springtime. What do we, you know, it, it, it's, it's like that, that story where the guy was in the ocean and they sent by the rowboat and they sent by the canoe and they, you know, they sent by the tugboat and God passes away and go to heaven and said, you know, God, you said you was gonna save me. He said, well, I sent all them things and you didn't take any of them. I sent you all the signs. How many more signs do we need before we wake up to say, okay, I gotta get busy. God has sent us all the signs. God has given us all the knowledge, the power. One of the key things in our teaching in the Science of Mind textbook, Dr. Ernest Holmes says this. He says, first, the very first sentence in the book says, I look forward to the day when science and spirituality walk hand in hand, from the visible into the invisible. And we're there right now. There's nothing that we can't at least conceive of and begin to come up with a way to release pain, to release hunger, to release any ailment that is, a, that, that, that is potentially detrimental to mankind. Now is the time. We don't, we, we, we don't want to wait until it's too late, right? Because we know there's this thing called momentum. If you ever, I'm not a skier. I, I, I took my kids skiing. And as soon as they could stand up, I sat down because <laughs> I, 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 it wasn't my cup of tea. But they understood that once you go down the hill, and I definitely understood, once the momentum gets you, it's tough to stop. And I didn't know how to stop. That's why I, I just fell over because I didn't know how to do the wedge or whatever they were trying to teach. I didn't understand it. But I, what I did understand is that once momentum takes action, once momentum gets you moving in a direction, at some point, you just have to surrender. You just have to surrender because you're not going to change it. That's, just, that's, that's science. And so the divine, God has told us, I'm going to send you sign after sign. Are you going to wake up? Are you going to learn the science of prayer? Are you going to learn the science of release? Are you going to learn the science of forgiveness? We know now that, that through, through these different institutes that when you forgive and pray for forgiveness, it does something to the chemical electromagnetic presence in your body. This is, not, this is not a dream. This is fact. With prayer, with forgiveness, with meditation, they've, they've understood now that science and spirituality are two sides of a coin. Nobody's ever seen a one-sided coin. So when are we going to wake up? Now, FDR, our, our, our president, said this. The only limit to our real, realization of today will be our doubts about, I mean, a realization of tomorrow will be our doubts of today. That's the only, that's the only limitation. The only limitation. So when are we going to wake up and release? Well, I'm going to give us three things to do that. At least to begin the process so that, so that we can, can bring our sweetness to the Bring our sweetness to the air. Now, the first thing is, and, and Rumi spoke to it in the very beginning, this is the, this is the cornerstone. Principle is not bound by precedent. Principle is not bound by precedent. Our, our founder, Dr. Holmes, said this. As we have proven that principle is not bound by precedent, we go into that realm which says, behold, I make all things new, not carrying with us the limited belief of the reason why it cannot be. Right? 
somebody told Steve Jobs, somebody stole, told Gates, somebody even told Elon Musk that you can't do that. You can't create a rocket that'll go up in space and come back and land on a boat in the middle of the ocean that looks like a dot. You can't do that. He said, I'm not bound by precedent. I'm bound by principle. There is a principle. There is a law that says it can be done. And so what did he do? He said, well, I'm going to do it. Now, for him, he had enough money to do it. I mean, he could blow up a couple of rockets. And luckily, he hasn't hurt anybody that I know of. But he stuck to the principle that it could be done. And that's what God is telling us every day. We look at what we need in our lives. We look at the issues that we're facing. God says, I have principles that will take care of all of that. But you have to step up. You got, you, you got to release your fears. You got to release your guilt. All, all the doubts. Trust in my everlasting hand. And guess what will happen? It'll happen. It'll happen. So that's the first thing is that we are not bound by principle. And we have the ability to transform anything. Anything. And so the question might become, well, you know, what am I supposed to be releasing to get this idea of what anything, everything, if it's holding you back, let it go. That old relationship. That mistake when I screamed at my wife last night. That that time when our children wanted to go to the movies and I wouldn't let them, and they 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 reacted. Because we're talking about real life. We're not talking about theoretical stuff. God has to be present in our lives in our every day, not just on Sunday, not just on Fridays, or not just on Saturdays when the various teachings have their religious services. God has to be present every day. When I wash the dishes, when I get in my car to go to work, when I come to church on Sunday, all the time. So we have to understand what the principle is. We have to understand. And, and we have to let go at every moment. Now, the second thing, once we, once we understand this principle, this is a verse, you, you, you've heard it probably many times and you hear me say it all the time. Be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. This is what Albert Einstein says. Logic will get you from A to B, but imagination will take you everywhere. That's what the renewing of your mind is about. Not sticking to the old patterns, not being bound by precedent. How long is it going to take us? I mean, we, my Angelou said this. You can't go back and change the beginning. But you can start where you are and change the ending. You can't change the beginning, but you can start where you are right now and, and fix the ending or, or create the ending. Create the imagination. How do you want your life to end? Or this project or this relationship. It, does, it, it applies to everything, and that's how we have to begin to look at life. These principles of, 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 of understanding spiritual life applies to everything because everything is spiritual. There's nothing that's not spiritual, even though we have come up with these divisions of it's physical, it's mental, it's emotional. It's all spiritual. So be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. So that we can create a world that works for all. The trees, the pets, the birds, the humans, the, the molecules in the air. I mean, I don't know if y'all was watching the news, but I watched it last week and they got 10 feet of snow in California. Something is wrong with the molecules. <laughs> they don't, they get snow, but they don't get 10 feet of snow in like a day and a half, two days. We have to become stewards. God has said, look, I have placed you as vice regents on the earth. Not that you rule anything, not that you control anything, but I've given you the ability, I've given you the talent, the intelligence to create a harmonious environment and you will be held accountable. 
are you going to get 10 feet of snow? I mean, I mean, it's an easy process to understand. So now that we understand that, we have to realize principle is not bound by precedent. We understand that if we can transform our mind, we can renew ourselves in the world we live in. And the last thing is this. And this may be the hardest thing of all, and that is to step into your greatness. To step into your greatness. In 1 Peter, 1 Peter says this. Each of you should use whatever gifts you have received to serve others as faithful stewards of God's grace in its various forms. This life is about service. It's not about things. We have to begin to serve one another. To serve one another. And when we can, when we can step into that consciousness of serving then we've already brought forth the presence of God. Because God is a loving God, is a gracious God, is a serving God. And that's what we are in, empowered and called to do. God said, I made everything in my image. So if everything is in God's image, then it's kind of hard to say something is bad. Now, you can say it's not on point. You can say it has forgot what God has given it, and we can give it the label bad. But in reality, it's something that has lost its mind, if you will. It does not remember what God told it in the beginning. God said, I lined up everything and told every person, every plan, what your purpose is, what your mission is. And some of us forgot once we got here. Because we got attached to something. We, 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 we didn't know how to release it. So we start labeling it this, so labeling it that. And at the end, those are the chains that bind us, that keep us from moving forward. That keep us from moving forward. So by releasing our own gifts, we are able to step into our greatness. We're able to move forward with confidence, backed up by angels that says, now is the time. This is the hour. Are you going to seize the moment? I'd like to read this in closing. The time is now. It's time to release the chains that bind us and step into the light of our own potential. Now is the time to rewrite our own stories guided by the lessons of yesterday and fueled by the dreams of tomorrow. Now is the time to release the past fears and guilts and grudges and all those things that keep us mired down and release the gifts of the glory of God. Together, let us embark on this journey with courage, faith, forgiveness, action, and positivity. The world awaits our contribution, and the time to make a difference is now. And so it is. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, that divine, supreme intelligence of the universe, we acknowledge your presence in all things. We understand the 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 infinite possibilities that you have laid out before us. And we understand that, that all things conspire for the good of the glory of God. And so we step into that glory right now. We step into that moment right now where we release anything that inhibits that, anything that clouds that vision, anything that prevents us from realizing who we are divine emanations from the most high God that has raised us up in a belief, in a faith that says serve, love, give. So now we put on that cloak of goodness, of greatness, and we ask that we submit our ever-loving life to the cause of goodness. 
And so I know today for me and for everyone in the audience and, and everyone that may be listening online now or later, that today we declare now is the time for us to release anything that holds us back, any fears, and allow the presence of God that is within each and every one of us to rise up, to bring forth the sweetness of our life. Because it has been said, the bud held on until the pain of holding on was too strong and it released into a beautiful flower. Be that flower today, release, open up, give, and know that the power and presence of God will be with you. And so I give thanks for this opportunity, for this moment, for this time, for this hour to step into my greatness, to encourage everyone to step into their greatness and know that God has an everlasting arm that will never fail. And so we release this into a law that is already in action, already moving in our lives, already moving in our affairs to make us the exact thing that God had created us to be. And so with that, I release, I let go, and I know that this is absolutely so, and so it is, amen. And so it is, amen. And so when it go through the call to action, because you know you can't come without a call to action, all this talking ain't worth two cents if nobody go and do anything, right? But before I do that, or you can bring them up, I want to give a recognition to my fraternity brothers who've come to the service today. Um, this is our month of uh, our memorial service for our fallen brothers and, and, and my church was selected for them to attend today. So I appreciate all them being here and it's great to see everyone. And so as we go through the week and we wanna get this idea of releasing in our lives, the first thing that we wanna do is we wanna look at what habits or activities need to be released so you can step into new territory? Take a journal, ponder in your mind, but look at what activities and habits need to be changed. And then the second thing is, what old story are you telling yourself or others that keep you from stepping into your greatness? That's the homework, right? <laughs> I come to church and they're giving homework. Yeah, you come to church and they're giving homework. Because this, we got we to gotta live this stuff, right? And so as we go through the week and we have an affirmation to anchor this in our, in our minds and in our hearts, that affirmation says, I release the past and claim a higher, happier experience of life today. We can use that affirmation to anchor as we go through this process. And so now is that time of sacred giving. We thank everyone for being here. Uh, we are a spiritual community seeking to create community, however it looks, however it shows up, so that we can be the one we are asking for. And so whether this is your first time coming or, or you're a visitor, we appreciate it. And we love that the talents, the gifts, and the money you give is without measure. And so if you look going across the bottom of the screen, you'll see the many different ways you can give, whether well, you can go to the uh, website and click the donate button, you can do a text to give, or you can send a check or money order to the PO box. But however you give, we appreciate it. And if it feels comfortable, if you place your hand over your heart and repeat our affirmation of giving, this perfect gift is spirit informed circulating in blessing all that it touches freely i give and joyously i receive and so it is amen and now alice one of our practitioners will come up and give some announcements thank you reverend delzia very powerful talk i have my homework cut out for me <laughs> that one about retelling your story over and over again Anyway, mark your calendars. Next Sunday is our divine dialogue. So after service, um, we will be meeting and circling up and talking about um, Women's History Month, Reverend Delzia's talk, anything that we want to talk about, we have this time um, to do. 
And we have older Science of Mind magazines over on the table that are for free. And there are this month's, um, the March, April, we just got in hot off the press. And those are $4 and they, uh, the home office has combined. So it's two months, you know, it's two months, March and April, but it's the same price of $4. And if you would like to hear some good news of the world to affirm the good in the world, we have a link on our Facebook page called And Now the Good News. So um, this program is put together by New Thought Media Network and airs on Fridays at 5 p.m. Mountain Time, or you can watch these anytime during the week. Just go to the Center for Spiritual Living Denver Facebook page and click on any post that says And Now the Good News. So we all could use some good news during the week. <laughs> And New Thought Media Network offers just a ton of different stuff, different programs. They've got prayers at 8.15 in the morning and the evening, um, just to sit and sit into that space and just know the truth of who each of us is. And we are so truly, truly blessed by everyone who has chosen to support CSL Denver by showing up on Sundays or watching our services online. We know that as we move through this year, the divine beloved is guiding and loving each and every one of us. Thank you for joining us. And now let's close out with Karen Drucker singing, I'm so grateful. Please join us for fellowship. Rumi brought banana bread and we've got some other goodies over there and coffee and tea. Media Network. We are a global broadcast network of positive music, media, and entertainment. Inspiring humanity's evolution along the journey of enlightenment and creating a world of love, peace, empowerment, and prosperity for all. New Thought Media Network. Positively inspiring.